Crusader Kings 3, a paradox grand strategy game with heavy role playing elements. In this game, you don't play as a country, but a ruler. And actually, rather that ruler's family, as you attempt to build a dynasty that will stand the test of time. I absolutely love this game. And today, I'm gonna try doing something I've never done before. Being Jewish? Usually in CK3, you'll play as a Christian, a Muslim, or if you're feeling really spicy, a pagan. All of those religions come with the advantage of having other rulers who share your faith allowing you to have access to good marriages, good alliances, and not everyone around you wanting to kill you all the time. However, in the 867 start, there's only one ruler who's Jewish. This guy. Hello there. Our boy serves as a count, under a duke, under a king, both of whom are a hostile religion to him. Our goal this playthrough is going to be to take out Leech's throne and diverge our culture in order to get the Beta Israel achievement. Going for achievement seems to be playing on Iron Man mode, which means we won't be able to save scum our way out of tough situations. With all that being said, we're gonna need every advantage we can get, and Homeboy over here is randomly generated and generally not that great, so we're gonna make our own character. Let's go ahead and meet him. Everyone, this is Bullet. An Ethiopian Hamanot Jew who's a military genius. Blunt is ambitious, brave, and zealous. He's also a little bit smarter than your average cookie. Wow. So will Blunt and his family be able to take the kingdom and diverge the culture? Today, we're going to find out. We start off by going to our liege and asking to modify our feudal contract. We're looking to get religious rights in exchange for more feudal taxes. This will prevent him from asking us to change religions and then having a legal reason to revoke our land from us. Our liege accepts our offer and we've secured the ability to remain Jewish. Hip, hip. Hooray! We now look to play the marriage game and we see two potential suitors. One of them being quick, the other one being possessed. In the end, we decide to go with the quick one. However, the possessed lady may have been fun too. Nice. We didn't look in our court for any unmarried courtiers that we can use to get some better knights in our realm. However, even then, the pickies are pretty slim. Hey pal, you just blowing from stupid town? With all our courtiers married, we use them to rejuggle our council and begin plotting how we can take our liege's title. As we're trying to figure out what to do, our liege makes us his spy master. <laughs> which is going to be really useful if we try and plot any hostile schemes against him. Since we have such a big advantage to our hostile schemes, we plan on switching into the stewardship tree and taking the perk called Meritocracy, which will allow us to do a hostile scheme to claim our liege's throne. Since I wasn't exactly sure how the start would go, I went into the military tree to shore up our defenses. So as a result, I'm going to go ahead and finish off the chivalry tree in order to get better knights and better fighting and just overall be a better military when we do have to go to war of our liege for this title. As we're biding our time, our wife gives birth to twins. One of them being our son and heir, the other one being not as useful right now. But we do have plans for her too. Our daughter is intelligent, so we're going to use her to get some more good traits into our bloodline. That may or may not mean things get a little weird in the family later on. As we continue to bide our time and finish out that perk tree, we have a few more kids and suddenly our liege declares war on the king for his claim to the throne. Stupid. This could go really well for us if he loses the war and his military is weakened. And the timing is perfect for us too, because we just unlocked the meritocracy perk. The only real concern we have is that he'll lose the war too soon because we need our scheme to fire and then we need to go to war of him. So he'll need to be alive and still be to our liege for us to actually go through with our plan. Our liege ends up losing the war, but fortunately our king doesn't see it fit to take his duchy away, which means we can still go forward with our plan. While he's still in jail, our claim throne scheme pops and we go for it. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. However, our liege has had time to recover since his war with the king and he's now a little bit stronger than us. So we go ahead and switch to a command focus, put our wife on chivalry, and purchase some more men at arms in order to get stronger. This allows us to gather more troops than him, and we press our claim for his throne. The lad has a commander score of 39, so I'm expecting this war to go really well. You're a big guy. For you. Blet proves this by absolutely dominating a fight in the mountains. I mean, look at these rolls. Oh, that's a lot of damage! We end up getting enough war score to press our demands, and our liege has no choice but to hand over his title. Cheers, mom. Now that we're the duke, we're actually looking to grab more of his land directly, so we demand he converts, and actually hope that he doesn't so we have a reason to revoke his titles from him. He does decline to convert base, but unfortunately we have a peace treaty with him for now, so we I don't have the ability to revoke his titles for the next five years. Mods, crush his skull, thank you. In the meantime, we start interacting with our new liege more, the king. He makes us the marshal on his council, 
And then he tells us that he wants to be friends because he loves the fact that we hate his brother. Amazing. F is for friends who do stuff together. Our first son and daughter grow up, and we place our son in our council as our new marshal because, well, nepotism is very much a thing. We also send our daughter off to get married to someone else who's intelligent in hopes that they'll make a genius one day. Unfortunately, we're not able to make much use of our friendship with the king as he ends up dying right after we become friends. The new king seems to be a bit of a pushover, though, and ends up giving us a vassal in order to try and appease us, to which we once again employ a tactic of demanding his conversion and when he denies, revoking his titles. This leads to a real quick rebellion war that we really rapidly clean up. Oh, fuck. I can't believe you've done this. As we continue to grow in power, suddenly the king's mother decides to seduce us. As we plan on having more hostile schemes against the king, this might be a good ace to have up our sleeve. Eventually, the five-year peace treaty ends and we're able to revoke our rival's land. So we once again go to war for Vassal, and again, it's just a pushover war. However, unfortunately, one of our sons dies during combat, which, don't tell anyone, but may be all right due to succession loss. I, I see this as an absolute win. Despite this tragic loss, we are able to clean up this war, and we go ahead and take some more revenge on our rival. <laughs> the king asks that one of our sons gets raised in his court. I'm not a big fan of the idea, so I decline. However, he takes that personally. It, it became personal with me. And he revokes our duchy from us. Now, I'm not just gonna hand it over because we worked really hard to get that duchy, so we end up going to war with the king. I think this guy talks a lot, and it's about time for him to learn some respect. Fortunately, he doesn't seem like he's that popular, as another vassal rises up against him too. We march over to his capital, and we siege it down pretty quickly. After that siege, we go to fight his army directly, but he's just totally afraid of us. Why are you running? Why are you running? We're eventually able to catch him out, and we finish his war. As a result of losing the war, he ends up being deposed and replaced by a child. Wherever you are, you're a bitch. With there being a bit of a power vacuum in the kingdom now, we start thinking of ways to claim the title for ourselves. One way would be through a disillusion faction, which would allow us to destroy the title and then conquer enough land to make the realm ourselves. However, an easier way is when we use the Claim Throne Scheme again. This is because using the Claim Throne Scheme won't require us to reconquer all the lands necessary and have all the gold necessary to refound the kingdom. However, the chances of this successfully happening are greatly reduced when our scheme to claim the throne ends up getting discovered. How do you feel about this? Do you think it's going to happen? For chillin's sake, I hope this is not his last match. All I gotta say is you're gonna have to delete that YouTube video. We end up looking out though, because by the time this game pops, our chances are about 50-50. Fortunately for us, it ends up succeeding. Great success. If our new claim to the kingdom, we go to war to press it. We start off by once again sieging the capital in order to get our ticking war score going by grabbing the war goal. Once we've secured his capital, we re-engage his army for a pretty easy fight and then go carpet siege the rest of his promises in order to get our war score up to 100. This makes us the new king of the kingdom. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, la, la. Whoa, whoa, whoa. King in the castle, king in the castle. Have a chair, I have a chair. Oh, go do this, go do this, king in the castle. As a new king, our first decree is that everybody needs to be the same religion as us. Or give us their land. Either one will do. Now we fought down nice, for the win. Damn, look, he's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, most of our vassals aren't just going to take this lane down. So again, we have to go to war with most of them in order to clean up the vassals situation. With all the new land we've gotten from our former vassals, we want to divvy it up between our sons so we can hold on to our two oldest duchies. Thank you, kind sir. Well, we could theoretically just disinherit everyone but our primary heir. I find it a little bit immersion breaking, and I like the additional challenge, and it will also allow us to get more renowned to get better dynasty perks. After a few holy wars with some of our neighbors, we're able to get enough land and get enough duchies to where we're able to retain the duchies that we're trying to hold on to. This means that we're finally set up for succession, and we'll have a good run in our next life. If our kingdom's succession secure, we start eyeing the Empire title. We start this out with a new holy war against an uh, opponent that I see as relatively weak at the moment. However, I may have made a slight miscalculation when it turns out that the Byzantine Empire comes in to back them up. Yeah, uh, oh it's gonna be a tough fight. Since we're pretty outnumbered, our plan is to just kind of starve them out by running away and hoping they run out of supplies and 
hopefully getting a good enough roll modifier that we can overcome their massive number advantage. And that, look, I, I got one more thing to say. I got one more thing to say. So there's going to come a point when you forget about what happened and you're going to want to come back at me and you're going to want to wash the taste of my dick out of your mouth. This is a video game. Fortunately, our starve the mouth plan seems to be working out all right. Their army ends up splitting up as they go back to resupply and we're able to catch one of them out and actually get a victory. However, the cost of that victory is that the resupplied army comes back and ends up whipping our asses, which really isn't a good thing considering the war score is pretty desperate at this point. I made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment. However, perhaps the tides are turning because we're able to secure a few victories in a row, which sets us up to go siege down a war target, which is desperately needed if we plan on not getting dominated this war. So we move on to the capital to try and siege it down, but at this point, it's just a race against the clock. They're about to hit 100 war score, and if we don't siege this down before then, we're gonna lose. Unfortunately, we end up losing the war, and it sends us into crippling debt. I'm never gonna financially recover from this. Fortunately, we have a decent income and our kingdom's relatively stable, so we're able to get out of that whole debt crisis situation with relative ease. So at this point, I remember the point of the playthrough was actually to diverge the culture. So I go ahead and take a look at how much prestige it's gonna cost, and it turns out it's a lot more than I thought it was going to be. We're probably not gonna be able to do it this life, so it'll be up to our son to get that done for us. Because my dad told me to. To get ahead and start on this, we hand our oldest son one of our duchies in order so we can start gaining some passive prestige. This isn't really going to be a problem for us since we'll re-inherit those lands once we start playing as him. With our last expansion war proving to be a massive failure, we're hoping this time to take on some smaller enemies and actually declare more than one war at a time in order to speed up the process of conquering just a few counties. <laughs> oh no, you found out the camera's here. <laughs> uh oh, no round brown? <laughs> <laughs> Look what looked at me, he made eye contact, he's like, what the I'm F is that? No round, round, no rounds, this round. So the war goes really successfully, and as a bonus, our son becomes a legendary blade master in the middle of it. Whilst you were out partying, I studied the blade. We go to hand out the titles to some loyal people, however this stresses us out because of our ambitious perk, which is not great because we're pretty old and our health is not doing too hot. It's completely possible that we could die at any moment. However, I highly doubt Bled has any plans of stepping down anytime soon. So come on, when will you be ready to step down? I don't know. Five? Five years? Ten. Ten? Dad, seriously. It's my fucking kingdom. However, the glory days of Bled are definitely behind him when he becomes infirm. Perhaps sensing weakness in the kingdom, our neighbors to the southeast decide to declare war on us. Due to Bled's advanced age and health conditions, we don't really want him commanding our armies this time. We leave the commanding duties to our son. This proves to be a good decision, as before we're even able to engage the enemy army, Bled passes on to the next realm, leaving our eldest son, Mertis, to rule the realm. I just wanted to get the gang together early in my tenure to say, uh... Yo. Mertis is a humble, impatient, and greedy man, and while not quite the military commander his father was, he's an excellent fighter. Mertis will look to grow his kingdom into an empire, and eventually gain enough fame and glory to diverge his culture giving us the achievement. And he starts us off by winning his first battle against an enemy. Wolf crown! Oh! Disrespect! Wipes his hands up! Tells him to get! Oh, Wolf Be crown. gone! Wolf crown. He washed his hands of that man and told him to go home. We're able to wrap this war up pretty quickly, and we get a nice little income boost as a result of winning a defensive war. This is going to help us purchase a grand temple and our holy site. In addition to the two flat tax it gives us, it also increases our holding taxes, development, piety, monthly renown, reduces our men at arm maintenance. It's just a great idea. However, there's also the issue of succession again. We need to conquer more land to give to our sons again so we can retain our two core duchies. So, to start off, we go to war with a couple of plebs and wrap those up really quickly. We then use the same tactic as our father by demanding people convert to our religion and then revoking their titles from them when they deny us. This allows us to assume direct control and hand the land down to our sons, protecting our succession line. However, as we're in the process of doing this, we get war declared on us for one of our core provinces by a rather strong enemy. This is going to be a rather difficult war, so we're going to need every trick up our sleeves in order to get this done. Leo, he is oh laughing, he is shaking his head, he is a very disrespectful individual. 
Oh, oh my, my God. God, he's talking to him. He's talking to he him. told him that he's free, folks. Despite us being outnumbered, we need to engage the enemy before they take control of the war goal. So we plan out a fight in the mountains and we're able to take on their armies a few at a time. This allows us to actually win a battle in which we were outnumbered two to one. Oh my gosh! Cane Blue River, wow! Cane Blue River actually comes back after that disrespect last night. From there, we're able to snowball into even more victories, and we begin to siege down the war leader's capital. Once we siege his capital, we get enough war score to enforce our demands, and get a nice little payout again. People should really stop attacking us. Unfortunately though, there seems to always be a crisis in this kingdom, as a claimant faction for our throne is rising up, and our nephew wants to take our crown away from us. Subordinate and churlish. Currently, this faction is pretty strong, so I wanted to figure out a way to deal with them without having to go to direct war with them. I see that the stronger member of the faction has an unmarried sibling, which I thought was a daughter, and my heir is actually unmarried at the time too. So if I form an alliance with him by marrying my heir to his sister, we'll enter an alliance and he won't be able to join factions against me, which will reduce the faction's power and dissolve them. Now. Because I thought it was his daughter and not his sister, and he's my nephew, and my heir is my son, that means we're marrying some first cousins when I thought they were second cousins, and like I said, things get weird here. However, politically, this marriage is too good to pass on, and there's still a chance that some good traits can be passed down, and it's not 100% that we'll end up with bad traits, and uh, we're just gonna have to take it. Why are we still here? can't really complain though, because this does solve our problems with the faction. With things being stable in the kingdom again, we continue our expansion efforts by looking northward and declaring another holy war. Things go really smoothly as we're able to siege down our first province without any resistance from the enemy, and then continue onwards to a prompt victory. Easy! We turn this new land into a new duchy and hand it to one of our sons. However, this makes succession look even weirder than it was before. What the fuck? However, we can fix this relatively easily by conquering another duchy and handing that duchy to him as well. This will allow us to retain our two core provinces. So, we once again go off to war in the name of having a clean succession. War. War never changes. After that victory, we start to take inventory of what's around us, and we notice this weird purple province. We go to check it out and realize it's owned by the Byzantine Empire? What? And not only that, but owned directly by the Basilius himself? What? what? Who is also Coptic for some reason? We're just gonna have to hope that doesn't come to bite us in the butt. Despite that weirdness with the Byzantine Empire, our realm stability and economy have given us a good chunk of change, and we're pretty close to getting the Grand Temple. Well, except I forgot to unlock the cultural innovation for it, so uh, it's just been a big waste of time. On a brighter note though, our son and his cousin wife have given birth to a child. And he's beautiful! So we got that going for us. Anyways, we start playing out our next land grab. I mean, holy war. When we realize that the kingdom of Nubia next to us has no allies, and we're a lot stronger than them. The only issue is we don't currently have enough level of devotion in order to actually declare a holy war for kingdom. So we go on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem to help solve that issue. In the meantime, we take a look at our total prestige as we're pretty close to the end of our character's life. And we realize we're probably not gonna be able to reform the culture this life either. So rather than waste all our prestige on nothing when we die, we're gonna go ahead and add a new trait to our culture. Really the only one we can afford that's meaningful to us is mountain skirmishing, so we take that one. So we take a look at our character and we realize we developed melancholy. Hello darkness, my old friend. Sometimes it's tough to be the king, and in a move that might be worth bringing up to our therapist, we choose violence and go to war again. However, this time we may have overextended ourselves as our neighbor we were planning to declare war on. Declares war on us. And suddenly we're fighting a two front war. And while only for a single province, we really want to win this war because it has grave implications on how our offensive war against Nubia will go. Also, right as that war starts, we have a man come into our court claiming he can help us with our depression. And he wants to do that by cutting holes into our head. And honestly, we cannot afford to die right now. So unfortunately, we're just gonna have to suck it up for now. I've come to talk with you again. Fortunately, we're able to clean up our first war really easily by capturing a valuable hostage and enforcing our demands. This only leaves the Kingdom of Nubia as an enemy, and we're able to really quickly take out two of their stacks, mainly due to their low commander scores. Since the Nubians are a hostile faith to us as well, we've been gaining piety from each one of these fights, and we get our level of devotion high enough to actually declare a holy war for Kingdom. As the war progresses, one of our sons dies in combat. This battle directly led to our victory, and he will not be forgotten, and we will also be eternally grateful for how it cleaned up succession. Our 
victory in that war put the Nubians in a tough place. They're going to have to recover troops, and their economy has been destroyed. So, now's a great time for us to go ahead and declare that holy war. The new offensive war goes off to a great start because of how decimated their troop count is. But despite the kingdom's military victories, the king suffers yet another tragedy when his wife dies. We're not really able to manage the kingdom on our own, so we do need to get married again. Unfortunately, the best steward is still within range to give birth to children, which could screw up succession again, but it probably won't happen, right? Perhaps hoping our melancholic king is in mourning, the Nubians offer us a white peace deal. We're winning this war, so no, we're not gonna take it. Somehow in the middle of this war, the king finds time to father yet another son, which throws a real wrench into the succession plans, but at this point we're probably gonna take over another kingdom, so we should be fine. There is only one thing worse than a heathen. Boom. A child. No. At this point, we've been at war with the Nubians for many years. The biggest challenge is proving to be sieging, because we don't have access to siege equipment yet. We should probably make that a priority, or else these wars are just going to continue to get worse. Once we're finally able to siege down their capital, we're extremely close to being able to end this war. However, our enemy sieges down one of our capitals, and causes us to have to go engage with them and siege down yet one more province to go get a victory here. However, we're successfully able to do this, and we win the war. We take control of the Kingdom of Nubia, as our kingdom becomes larger than it's ever been before. That's quite big. Impressive. Our kingdom's power can't last forever though. We currently have three heirs and enough land to create more than three kingdom titles. Unfortunately, we also use confederate partition, which means that each one of our sons is going to get one of those kingdoms once we die. One way to correct this and hold our realm together will be to form an empire title. However, we are still 17 counties short of having enough land to do so, and we're also going to need a thousand gold to create the title. Our ruler is also already 70 and doesn't really have a ton of time left on this earth. We do what we can by switching him into a health focus, but there's no real guarantee he'll be able to form this empire title. There's a strong possibility we're going to have to fight to reunite this realm. However, pretty much right away, we contract leprosy, and due to our advanced age, we ask for a advanced treatment. Unfortunately, she botches this disastrously, and we die. We take over as our eldest son, King Samir, age 36. Samir's a bit different than his grandpa and his dad. A craven, trusting, and vengeful man, he tends more towards the diplomacy side of things than war, as made obvious by his martial score. While we're still inheriting our two main duchies, our realm has been shattered into three separate kingdoms. To shreds, you say? We still have a press claim on each one of those two kingdoms though, so we should be able to really easily take over them, as we did end up being the strongest sibling out of the bunch. As we are now more of a diplomat than a warrior, we're going to go ahead and take a majesty focus, and then go down the August Perk tree in order to get as much prestige as possible. This will make it really easy to unlock this achievement. We pretty much immediately get to the process of reuniting our realm by declaring war on our brother to the south. He puts up no real resistance, putting two of the three kingdoms back under our control. However, when we look up, we see that our other brother's realm has completely shattered. What did you do, you idiot six-year-old? Couldn't have said it better myself past me. And even after we declare war on him, his realm continues to shrink as his title gets dissolved. Well, how is his wife holding up? To shreds, you say? We attempt to start cleaning up what's left of that shattered kingdom, but our level of devotion isn't high enough to even declare a holy war for his duchy, so we once again take a pilgrimage to Jerusalem to try and gain some more piety. In the meantime, we're at least able to vassalize our brother, thanks to our true ruler perk in the August tree. So after getting back from our pilgrimage, we go ahead and declare a holy war for duchy on some of the land formerly held by our brother. The war was pretty easy due to their lack of troops, However, we once again are really hampered by our lack of siege equipment, and everything's taking way longer than it should be at this point. Undeterred by this, we continue expansion efforts northward by declaring another holy war. Unfortunately, they actually have some allies come help them this time, and the lack of siege equipment is really going to rear its ugly head in this war. Things start off alright as we're able to take a victory in a battle that ends up actually being kind of close, and we use this opportunity to siege their capital. However, because of our lack of siege equipment, they've had time to unoccupy some of the counties. Damn it! not able to quite get a 100 war score. The tides start turning as well, but we lose a pretty major fight against them. We end up losing a lot of troops, and we're now behind in the total troop count. We lose yet another battle, but our enemies offer us a white piece. Seeing how things have gone really poorly recently, I go ahead and take it. Perhaps just out of pure tilt, we declare war on four counts next to us. Um, that's gonna be interesting. Fortunately, we clean all those up really easily, but in a power play, I wanna call it, we do the exact same thing again. It's time to stop. 
Uh, we run into a bit of a problem here when an enemy's absolutely insane commander causes us to lose a battle. And it's not luck either, because re-engaging them ends up with the same result. It's time to stop. Because of our slow sieges, our war score is starting to get a little rough in some of the other wars, so we go ahead and ignore them for now and siege down some of our weaker enemies. After reducing some of the pressure we're under, we hire some mercenaries and we barely managed to actually get them into a fight with us, but hiring them was a good choice because we ended up winning a really difficult victory. We're able to convert that battle into a victory, however, because of how long our sieges took for all the other wars, the ticking war score is really against us in our last war, and we end up losing it and going into another debt crisis. Since we won't be going to war anytime soon with that kind of debt, we go ahead and ensure that we're actually researching some siege equipment so we can prevent this from happening again. Additionally, since we're so close to hitting 5,000 prestige and war isn't an option to generate it, we think of some creative ways to do it and start romancing our wife. This succeeds and puts us extremely close to hitting that 5,000 prestige target. I, I wrote a blog post a while ago about why I fucking hate video games because this is what it does. It appeals to like the male fantasy. Fishing with my best friend, who was also my wife, who was also my soulmate. After waiting for a few months, we hit the 5,000 prestige target and began the process of diverging our culture. We switch to a bellicose court type as we've been in quite a few wars in our day and we take the decision. There was something's amiss when I don't see the achievement pop up. So I go to check to see if we unlocked it in the menu and it doesn't look like we did. So the only thing I can assume is that the custom character, which I Googled, by the way, to look up if we could do it with a custom character, prevented us from doing so. So uh, I, I guess this was just a waste of time. However, we are in a pretty strong position as a Jewish character, which allows us to have some cool decisions to take. So next time, I'm gonna try and take the decision to restore the Haymont Priesthood and restore the Holy Land for Israel. If you wanna check that out, you can click the video here. Hope you guys have enjoyed our journey in the world of an African Jewish king. It's been a pretty fun playthrough and I'm glad we did it overall, even if we didn't get the achievement. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed it, drop a like, drop a sub. I don't really care, just do what you want. All right, later.